Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Stolarski, Marketing Manager for Progress, and I'll be your host for today's webinar titled Flowmon Live, Network Detection and Response Optics. And today's webcast will be presenting a live product demonstration of our Flowmon solution. Before we begin, I do want to mention we are recording today's session, and after the webinar, we will be sending out a copy of the recording to all the attendees. Um, and now I'd like to introduce today's speaker and presenter here. Uh, you see him. Arthur Kane, who is our senior product manager for our, our Flowmon solution. And with that, Arthur, take it away. Thank you very much, Kevin. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone joining. Uh, today's session will be hands-on and packed with loads of interesting information. So let's get right in. Um, I'd like to start with a little bit of theory and then we'll jump into live demo. So let me start with a quote. Detection and response are more important than blocking and prevention. And we know this uh, for many years now, and it works just the same in cybersecurity as um, in our lives. When we, we first need a disease before we can come up with a remedy. And attackers are always a step ahead. So we need to be looking at symptoms and indicators of compromise rather than only searching for known viruses to be ready to reduce, um, reduce risk and to be able to respond on time. Um, such indicators of compromise could be different types of attacks, uh, like scanning for open ports over network, trying brute force attacks, denial of service, or different anomalies that look different than what we expect from protocols such as DNS and others. Um, it is also uh, different unwanted applications, uh, changes in behavior of uh, devices, and all of those can help us to identify whether something in the network occurs to be malicious and we should um, focus on that. Traditionally, um, detection capabilities um, we're focusing on two spots in the network. First is perimeter, um, well, and that's what uh, kind of divides the internal and outer um, network or internet. Uh, and the other point is endpoint, uh, and we've heard of end, uh, endpoint detection response, antiviruses. Um, and while those are very important, they still leave some gaps for uh, bad actors to work. We are looking at so-called MITRE framework or MITRE attack framework, actually a simplified version that shows a life cycle of um, a breach. Um, and we have, um, uh, we have these gaps marked uh, red that um, are important to track and look for um, in order to have multi-layered and complete security. We can um, introduce network detection and response to cover those uh, life cycle stages um, and find indicators of compromise throughout the life cycle of the whole breach um, to better uh, protect our networks. 
traditional, we obviously know that we are not on unit technology. Um, we've uh, we've been recognized by Gartner at least from 2010 with our network detection and response uh, capabilities. And during all this time, we've seen, I would say, two types of technologies. Um, most detection um, the solutions are based on statistical methods that trigger alerts when there is a big spike and big change in uh, in traffic. Um, we specialize on uh, finding small deviations that help us to uh, to find low and slow attacks that are otherwise unseen uh, by other technologies. Another issue that many companies have is that due to their um, solution architecture, um, they require too much hardware and resources, um, and it gets uh, out of budgetary um, uh, limits of customers to cover more than own emission critical systems and often have no visibility into other parts of their IT environment. Whereas with Flowmoon architecture that is very scalable um, due to uh, the amount of detail we um, process uh, and the resources we need to do our calculations, we can, um, we can detect uh, events throughout the whole IT infrastructure um, East-West traffic, regardless whether, whether it is in private or public data center, um, monitor users, LAN, uh, and all critical systems from a single pane of glass. Um, we also use combination of detection methods and do not only rely on mathematical and statistical uh, models. We also incorporate uh, machine learning and adaptive baselining, which uh, literally means uh, creating baselines of uh, of different types of traffic in the network and uh, reporting on deviations. Um, but we also use behavior patterns. Uh, those are known characteristics of bad actors. Uh, and we also incorporate reputational data uh, and some signatures. While we do not depend on signatures, we find them very useful uh, enrichment of contacts. And all these methods uh, come in a bunch of over 200 individual algorithms that look for different indicators of compromise in different stages of network attack. And we provide early detection and response uh, to those. So um, our approach is different and what sets us apart is that our early detection um, can um, be much more precise and help you find uh, those attacks that are undetectable by traditional approaches. We also provide you context-rich information um, that I will show momentarily that will immediately help you to understand what's going on and respond fast uh, and with confidence. Uh, due to incorporation of multiple methods, we also give you lower number of alerts uh, because before showing something, we try to make sense of what it is uh, and help you um, getting noiseless insight and only the amount of information that you need uh, for response. And our architecture enables to scale across the entire IT environment and deliver the same visibility and uh, detection capabilities across your entire landscape. Another um benefit that sets Fomun apart uh, is that we offer uh, network obser observability um, for both the networking and security operation teams. And we do this because um, in our experience, we see that, uh, especially in larger networks, these teams are siloed. Um, and they often spend budget on tools that have overlapping functionalities. Um, and uh, it's just excessive um, money that goes into waste, especially when we think that uh, of, of having separate dashboards for separate teams, uh, even though they have to collaborate on many activities. The benefits of combining NetOps and security uh, operations together on their uh, same dashboard is that uh, we help them to join their efforts on daily uh, activities like um, building safer infrastructure, uh, doing faster response or automate activities. It is a single source of truth 
that comes in a shared platform and helps to look at a single event from two different perspectives that are meaningful um, for those targeted viewers. We also help to optimize spending because you obviously don't have to buy multiple technologies to achieve the same goals. Uh, and we help to reduce breach impact because faster collaboration means faster response. Okay, so this was a bit of a theory and without further ado, let's jump into the promised live demo. So um, I prepared for you two different workflows uh, today. One will be more, more focused on daily routine overview of what's going on, picking up on critical event and responding to it as fast as possible. The other workflow will be more thread hunting oriented. So that's what you do after you do initial, um, initial uh, isolation of a breach. You know that you are somewhat safe and now you have time to dig deeper. So let me start with, um, every day monitoring, uh, picking up on critical event and trying to solve it. I'm looking at uh, our dashboard that comes in form of predefined widgets. Uh, I can also create my own and share them with my colleagues. Uh, I like specifically this dashboard that shows me um, that shows me my events sorted by priority. Um, I can see uh, I can see uh, different e IP addresses uh, that have the highest number of events. I can see different event types. But let me um, quickly go through a few of these dashboards that we have here available. One of them. Uh, is my attack framework. So he, here I can clearly see uh, different event types displayed on the life cycle with regards to life cycle stage of uh, that breach. Um, thanks to our deep observability, we can also help you solving compliance monitoring. Um, in this example, we're looking at encryption used in my network. Uh, but that was just to show you um, few different types of dashboards that we provide. I'll go back to the one that I like the uh, most. And I want to look at um, overview of events by their type, as I can see that there are some critical events that require my attention. Let me zoom in quickly um, and look at, oh, let me change actually into priorities. And now I can see my critical um, events uh, up here. So what's interesting to me is that there's some anomaly uh, on upload in my network. And that is a big concern for me because this is a potential data breach. What I know immediately is what, what who is the source uh, of this anomaly. And this is an IP address in my LAN network. Um, let me also look at uh, some details of the event. Uh, event. So um, I'm in uh, is uh, Central European time zone. So this is just a recent um, uh, event. I can see there was over 22 megabits of uh, data sent uh, to a target IP address that is unknown to me. So maybe I can look at some general information about this IP address. And I immediately know that this is uh, an IP address in Thailand. And it is, for fact, um, a known botnet command control server. So I immediately want to jump on this and try to figure out um, some details uh, and respond as fast as I can. What I did was to see if there are any intrusion detection um, events related uh, to this. And it opened, actually, let me maybe zoom little a little bit um, to see details of the event. So I have human readable explanation. There is an excessive upload of data outside of allowed network segment. Uh, it looks to be um, a type of exfiltration, automated exfiltration classification by my attack framework. I know who is the source and I know identity of the user. We get this data from Active Directory. And then I, uh, I showed related uh, intrusion detection events that show me that there is a possible blue keep of vulnerability present on this device. So in order to respond, this, is, this can be very quick. 
uh, I can, using network access control, um, for instance, isolate this device from the network, um, block it, not let it to communicate further. I can run my uh, vulnerability scanner, uh, my antivirus. I can reinstall the device and um, make sure that I refresh my antivirus um, databases everywhere and run scans to see if I can see the same vulnerability anywhere else. And that's a quick fix. Um, this is what I do on a daily basis. Uh, that's great. But there might be much more to this event than only uploads of the, um, of the data. So to figure out that, I like to go from analysis into event viewer. And I really like this view called aggregated view. Um, let me apply it on the last two hours of monitoring and zoom in a little bit on this timeline. And what it immediately shows me that this IP address was not only involved in um, that upload, but there was much more to it. On the timeline, I can see multiple detected events and I can see um, two different IP addresses that were involved in this. The whole situation, and now we got into the threat hunting part, um, I can see that everything started with some scanning. So um, this IP address was trying to figure out what other systems, computers are there in the network that it can attack. And sure enough, after the scanning started, we can see different uh, dictionary attacks on remote desktop protocol services. We can see uh, other uh, brute force attacks. And after that, they seem to be successful. We can see that there was some high transfer of data by this IP address. Later, um, we can see that, again, this blue IP address started uploading data somewhere. Uh, and it started uh, showing some other uh, anomalies. Now, um, I can see clearly solving, solving, the, uh, solving it by um, blocking this IP address from the network might not help and fix the whole issue. And this gives me much better understanding that there is so much more going on. What I'll do is to switch uh, to the same data but now looking at perspective of my attack, my attack. Let me zoom in a little bit again, because this might be a little bit too small. Oh, not ideal. Okay, so let's stick to this. If you remember, there is some scans. Of course, it is a discovery activity. Um, IP address, still the same one, scanned pretty much entire segment on, in, on my network. It also did different types of scans that ran on these three IP addresses, one of them being the one that um, a few seconds ago we saw was transferring high amounts of data. We also saw credential access. So again, this uh, IP address uh, was trying to uh, gain access and maybe even gain access to some of my IP addresses here. What's interesting is that I haven't seen this IP address before and it may be worth uh also adding this ip address into my scanning blocking whatever uh whatever um response actions i want to take again i can see identity uh, it seems that there is again uh, the same vulnerability present and after credential access there was some lateral movement of course, high transfer of data of this IP address to this one. It seems that the attacker was trying to download some data from the attacked station. And after that, the attacker started exfiltrating data to this, um, to this uh, blacklisted IP address. And what we haven't seen before is that there are some uh, there are some events that show as impact. In effect, it is data encryption. So not only there was a transfer of data from this victim, but also there was some encryption of data. So if we were to look at the upload anomaly, upload detection, whatever we want to call it, uh, in isolation, we wouldn't be able to see the full picture and our response action would, might not 
have been um, uh, complete and also our recovery of um, restoring data, um, refreshing, reinstalling operating systems might have not been complete, which means that the ransomware may still lurk somewhere in the network and may reoccur uh, again. So this threat hunting and visualizing event contextual or guys version with all those with all those human readable descriptions help me to understand full scope uh, of the issue. I have a few other examples. This is an anomaly on uh, SMTP. Uh, in this specific case, there seemed to be a spamming client in our network. Again, this classification is uh, exfiltration of data over alternative protocol. Uh, sometimes attackers use this technique of sending small amounts of data in emails um, to avoid traditional uh, detection and, and blocking mechanisms for exfiltrating data. And here I have some visualization of this being the spammer and having multiple address, uh, addresses that are visualized here and plus additional 600 and something uh, as uh, targets, user identity and all information available. I have some web sharing um, anomaly. These are some of the servers onto which this user from this IP address is uploading data to. And due to our, or thanks to our observability, we have all the traffic flows related to this um, communication here. So we can monitor additional information or even pass this information to networking team for appropriate actions. And the last event I wanted to share with you is detection of cryptocurrency uh, mining from this device uh, uh, by these two servers. So this will be all from our demo today. And let me go back to our presentation because I also wanted to share with you what is our uh, roadmap and what, um, what's coming up in uh, the next few weeks or months. So one of the first things that we will introduce is intrusion detection event visualization. Mm, you might remember that in live demo, I clicked on related IDS events, and those showed me potential blue key vulnerability presence um, on that um, respective device. And since we are not using signatures as base um, or core detection methods, but we use it as a context, what we will do is to add it into, uh, into uh, our analytical um, dashboard to make it easier to access and make more context of that. And we will also introduce AI-assisted threat um, enrichment, enrichment, I would call it, for one, we will have um, at a glance view of all the events and their trends on the network to help us to understand where to put our focus first. So instead of showing you a list of events uh, sorted by priority or detection, we will actually tell you whichever situations aggregated um, as a whole you should focus on because they um, have potential biggest impact on your resilience or data and we are also introducing a new concept of threat index where all ip addresses or hosts in the network are graded by threat index um, that is calculated by different trend behaviors detected incidents their involvement in different types of indicators of compromise uh, and really making sure that user can navigate and understand the critical points in the network without having to dig uh, very deep. Uh, another great addition is application and platform information, where all IP addresses uh, will not only be shown as IPs or usernames that we get from LDAP uh, or domain names like we do today, but we will also enrich external um, addresses uh, with uh, a logo of the service, name of the service, such as Tencent Cloud or um, Office 365, um, and also some related uh, information. Um, we are proud to uh, offer the fastest time to value on the market. Um, it takes 30 minutes to an hour to deploy Flowmon. 
um, you really, really literally go through a configuration of wizards. There, it's not a black box uh, solution that you don't see into. Uh, you have full access to the guts, um, and the process of tuning is uh, very quick. And we can give you first results uh, within hours or days after initial deployment, um, and help you to de detect events in real time, and uh, maximize and, and uh, actually reduce the time to resolution by a factor of 16. With that being said, um, we are more than happy to uh, reach out and engage with you to set up uh, such POC um, uh, or trial in your, in your environment uh, and um, give you um, a report or presentation of the findings that we, that we saw, detected events and take you through them and help you to uncover what's uh, happening in your network to help you to respond to potential breaches or other issues. So this is all from me today. And Kevin, it's over to you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Arthur. And thank you uh, everyone for today's uh, quick presentation, uh, but for informative uh, in, in today's webinar. So as a reminder, we will be sending out a recording of today's session via email in the next few days. Um, and as Arthur mentioned, we will be reaching out as well around the POC offering and any next steps in that process. So um, that concludes today's live Flowmon demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thanks, thanks for joining. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks everyone. Have I a know. great day.